Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head back to Slovenia once again. So this is yet another beer that came through with the second coming of the Davor box. So a huge thank you to Davor Sheeritz for making this review possible. He's been responsible actually for most of the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you now on the channel. And I have to say, the quality of Slovenian beer is pretty damn high these days. So if you get the chance to go there, very beautiful country. I'm hoping to visit in uh, summer of 2020. 20, very beautiful country, some very good wine apparently and also some very good craft beers and uh, you've got lots of lovely places to go and see as well. But for this review we are going to return to a brewery you've only seen, you've only just seen me introduce you to for the first time. We're going to go back to the Savinia Valley and we're doing another beer from Green Gold Brewing. So we're going to the other side of the spectrum with this one. This one is the Oil Wars, an Imperial Stout coming in at 10.5% ABV. So it should be a bit of a monster actually. I'm very very curious to try this one. As I always say, if you want a real measure of how good a brewery is, you really have to have a look at something from the dark side of the spectrum and something from the light side. So I'm really looking forward to this one and uh, it's quite highly rated on untapped and rate beer as well. So it should be a very very interesting beer and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Green Gold Brewing before. Hopefully I can add some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, or added to whenever I get the opportunity, I guess I should say and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about green gold brewing then on to my brewery notes so as i've told you before green gold brewing is owned by luca roynik whose family have been growing hops for generations on the family farm in the savinia valley you can find the savinia valley kind of halfway between very close to selia actually and kind of halfway between Maribor to the uh, the northeast and Ljubljana, which is pretty much in the centre of Slovenia. The farm itself has 41 acres of land, and apparently it's one of the largest hop producing farms in Europe. And it can be found, as I mentioned, just to the west of Selia, and it's actually part of the town Sheptember v Savinski uh, Dolini, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I do apologise for any bad Slovenian pronunciations in this video. Um, but the family farm was actually started about 120 years ago in the 1880s, and it's produced Slovenian hops of Varieties such as the Aurora, the Bobek, the Salaya, the Styrian Goldings, the Styrian Dragon, the Styrian Wolf, as well as uh, many others. You know, the Slovenian hops are very good quality these days. You know, they've got their, the hops that are more noble qualities, like the um, you know the Bobek and the and uh, the Aurora and things like that. But they've also got the higher alpha acid ones, such as the Dragon and the uh, and the Wolf, which give you these beautiful, beautiful fruity qualities. Um, but they started off, the hop farm started brewing back in July of 2016, and um, they had their premiere of their beers at the Sir Williams pub in, um, in, in Ljubljana in Slovenia, and they went down very, very well. They started off with a very small 500 litre brewery, but they've scaled up considerably since then. They installed a canning line in 2018. They've put in various new tanks and stuff to increase their fermentation capacity and they also have produced around uh, 15 types of beers as of early 2019. So I think it's onwards and upwards from these guys. The last beer I reviewed from them was the Kashmir IPA which was really really nice and um, they have got a West Coast IPA that uses all Slovenian hops as well which I would absolutely love to try. That's one for the future and um, so very much looking forward to trying something from the darker side of the spectrum. I've been very impressed with the quality of Slovenian IPAs that uh, Davor has sent up to me and it's always cool to try something from the darker side of the spectrum too. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Green Gold Brewing. One of the few um, kind of big commercial, um, if you like, well, they're not even that big. It's one of the few hop farms I've come across that actually have kind of put out a slightly bigger commercial brewery. I know there's one here in Skona that are looking to do the, uh, the same thing, but this is the first beer I think I've actually tried on the channel where it's been brewed. Uh, specifically at a hop farm. So one of the more unique um, brewery stories, if you like, that I've uh, 
told you here on the channel. But yeah, I do recommend you try some of the Slovenian beers if you get the chance. There's a hell of a lot of good breweries down there. As I've mentioned before, it does tend to be the case that countries that do wine very well also tend to do craft beer very well. And that is certainly the case uh, with Slovenia and Green Gold Brewing. As I mentioned, I was impressed before with the Kashmir New England IPA that I tried from them before. But that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram as well and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there and all the new beers and stuff that they release. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, this one is a 10.5% Imperial Stout and uh, it is brewed with coffee, flaked oats and Belgian chocolate. You can see the, uh, the artwork on this. The artwork is actually fantastic. I do wonder if um, Luca is a bit of a Sabaton fan because that looks suspiciously like Joachim Broden from Sabaton. Very, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with metal, Sabaton are all, you know, I think it's fair to say you call them a war metal band from here in Sweden and they're, they're awesome. I absolutely love them. A huge metal head. There you can see the green gold brewing symbol which again is very cool. It's almost like a kind of punky um, comic artwork type that they have on this one and it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back but not too much it just says it's kind of unpasteurized best before 12 months that kind of thing but um yeah an imperial stout at 10.5 percent with coffee flaked oats and uh, belgian chocolate added to it so um yeah should be a really interesting one so i guess without further ado then let's get this guy out and we will get on with the taste and then you can see it's also a gold topped camp which i think is a very nice touch and it said that this one was filled on the 23rd of um, November 2018 so yeah it's been in the can for about four months at the moment so without further ado then let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting again as I always say with these Slovenian beers a huge thank you to Davor for making these Slovenian reviews possible and I'll tell you straight away when you open this beer up you get a lovely waft of those um, chocolatey and coffee notes but look at that that looks like an absolute beauty yeah, get the last of it in. I don't want to waste any of this. So, um, yeah, beautiful looking beer this, but not, not at all surprising when you consider this one is an imperial stout when you think about its appearance. So, yeah, if I hold this one up to the light, it is actually pitch black. I think it's very fair to describe this one as a kind of ebony rosewood colour. There's a solid two-third finger of a fr of quite a dark frothy tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look um, really quite nice, I have to say. So um, yeah, but nothing overall particularly surprising about this beer when you consider it's an imperial stout, as I mentioned. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Ooh. Now that's really interesting because when you're a little bit further away from it, it almost has a little bit of this kind of slightly phenolic um, medicinal quality to it. But when you go into it, you really start to get these lovely kind of um, sort of coffee bean notes out of this. The coffee that's in this one for me is actually quite aromatic. It's quite an aromatic and almost slightly citrusy coffee. It almost has a little bit of a kind of reddish fruity note as well. So maybe that's where these slightly kind of phenoly type... Um, aromas are coming out. The beer almost has a little bit of a cakey quality to it as well. Not like a a rum cake but quite a, an alcohol, like a brandy cake or something like that. Um, it really just has this cakey and um, boozy sort of phenolic quality to it. An alcoholic fruit cake, something like that. Christmas pudding maybe. Um, something like that. But yeah, lovely coffee aromas to it for the most part in the malt base. Um, a lot of sweet chocolate as well. The chocolate actually has a really good balance between the um, the, you know, the chocolate's a really good balance between the kind of high cocoa varieties, the sort of 80-90% cocoa varieties, but it also has a little touch of milkiness in there, but mainly it's leaning towards those darker high cocoa notes that you would expect. Um, but yeah, the aroma here is absolutely beautiful, I have to say. It's a really, really nice and big more... It, the, the, in, in terms of the Imperial Stout category, it really leans more towards the roasty, toasty side of things. It's like it's almost like a Russian Imperial Stout, somewhere between a Russian Imperial Stout and a coffee stout in terms of its sort of roasty uh, roastiness in the aroma, actually. I think this one is, um, is very, very nice. Um, yeah, some nice chocolatey notes in there. 
and yeah, it's got a lovely, it, it, it really is just chocolate and coffee, this one, and the coffee, as I mentioned, is quite an aromatic variety. There's a little bit of earthiness from the hops in there too, um, and you can also smell there's a little bit of a red fruit, you know, which will be coming both from the chocolate, particularly when it's a higher um, when it's a higher cocoa percentage, and also a little bit from the, the hops too. It has, a, as I say, it has like a sort of pruny, um, almost datey kind of uh, kind of quality to it. Definitely a bit of a red fruit, you know, some um, some sort of um, as I said, there's definitely a bit of a, a a figgy kind of pruny sort of note to it. A little bit of a sharper raisiny note as well, and also some kind of um, candied red fruits too. And um, but a really interesting aroma. This one, as I always say with these beers, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. For me, there's not really any brown sugar elements to this one but a nice, more roasty, toasty imperial stout. And when you let it open up a little bit more, you start to get some of the sweetness from the chocolate. At the moment, I can smell a little bit of a, a kind of more milky chocolate and a little bit of a woody character to it as well. But, you know, overall, it smells like a really nice um, imperial stout, this one, somewhere between a Russian imperial and uh, a coffee stout, if that makes at all sense. But, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Oil Wars, a 10.5% imperial stout from, Giri, uh, from uh, Green Gold Brewing in uh, the Savinia Valley, just outside of Celia in Slovenia. Once again, a huge thank you to Davor Shiritz for making this review possible, and I hope you guys in Slovenia are enjoying these Slovenian beer reviews that I'm doing for you. So let's get stuck in. Slanja Skol Nastravia. Oh yeah. I do like how this one's coming across actually. Um, it's definitely more of a roasty, toasty imperial stout, this one. Um, so if you like, I would say, if you like your Russian imperial stouts and you like your coffee stouts, this is one that's, um, I think, going to tick a lot of boxes for you. It has a little, a few elements of both. You can really feel the roasty black malt coming through on this one, and then it just evolves to be a little bit more like a coffee stout and a bit smoother, actually. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome, awesome beer like this one. This one, uh, You know, it really... Um, it really does kind of give you a bit of a a, beat, a a blast on the tongue. This is this is good, you know. Big thumbs up once again to Green Gold Brewing for this beer. Yeah. Um, this is this is really nice actually. You need to take a few sips of this. As I always say with these darker beers. Take a few sips of them and just let your whole palate, your whole mouth adjust to them before you start analysing them too much because the flavours can really change on this. And um, like I said, this is a very, very nice, um, nice example of the style. And I've, I think I've had the ba I've had the batch fifty Imperial Stout, and um, the Black Hole, I believe it was called, from uh, Reservoir Dogs. And you will see just bear that in mind because you will see uh, 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 some more reviews involving that particular beer um, later on in this kind of Slovenian mini-series, but um, this is the, the second Imperial Stout, if I'm remembering rightly, that I've had from Slovenia, and, um, you know, it's uh, it really is very, very nice. These guys, they're, they're really damn good at IPAs, but it seems to be when they have a go at the darker side of things too, they're also producing some, some really nice stuff. So, yeah, let's just try and examine this beer then. So you can feel that roasty um, black malt backbone there. That just blankets the middle of your palate. On top of that, though, you can feel there is an element of a slightly bready note to this beer. Um, there is a pale malty element in there. You can feel that just kind of smoothing out that roasty black bone that I was talking about as well. Um, as the flavour evolves a little bit more, you start to get the more chocolatey uh, qualities in the middle of your palate. It's quite a high cocoa chocolate, like I was saying, a sort of 80-90%-ish um, cocoa actually, really quite a high dark cocoa note to this one, but then in, more in the centre of your palate you start to get the more milky um, chocolatey notes out of this one which is quite interesting too, I really like that, uh, and the coffee beans um, it, it's like this beer has layers, you've got roasty black malt backbone you've got a little bit of that smoother pale malty note, then you start to get the coffee beans the coffee beans do have that sort of aromaticity to it and it's almost, um, it, it does kind of uh, make the mouthfeel of this beer just feel that little bit lighter. It's really interesting how that works. Yeah. Um, 
the coffee beans do have a really good kind of aromaticity to it. As I've always said with these coffee stouts, it's a, a beer style that I've been getting really, really into recently, thanks to the likes of Dugas Breger here in, uh, well, in Gothenburg, and here in Sweden. And there's a few other breweries doing some really awesome coffee stouts as well. And um, this, you know, this one, again, is one that really... And packs a fair punch actually and I love the coffee in this. The coffee starts to come out more into the aftertaste as well and like I was saying to me the coffee beans in this one are really quite um, they're really quite aromatic and to me it's a little bit ironic that I enjoy this uh, style so much because I do not drink coffee um, I've, you know, I've never particularly enjoyed coffee but in Imperial Stouts it really works as a beautiful um, ingredient to add into the beer um, but the, the aromaticity of uh, this beer is uh, of the the coffee beans in this one is really quite nice. Um, if you go a little bit further forward on the palate, you can pick up that there is a little bit of a, a slightly woody flavour to this one, and almost a little bit of a nutty note. If you go to the very centre of your palate and come forward a bit, you can detect there's a little bit of a nutty quality that comes out especially in the aftertaste. And if you just go out to the sides of that nutty note, it starts to become a little touch woody actually, which is um, which is very very nice. But the whole malt base, um, the whole malty side of things of this beer just goes together really pretty damn nicely I have to say so again big thumbs up to Green Gold Brewing for this beer they've done a damn good job of this on the hoppy side of things then um, back corners of the palate you've got a nice earthiness and it's quite a strong earthiness in there actually you know is it maybe Summit or uh, or something else I'd be curious to know if there's any if there's particularly any Slovenian hops that are um, that are good for making Imperial Stouts that would be quite an interesting thing to know actually um, because I know it's mainly to me it's always English hops that I would use for an Imperial Stout to get that nice um, earthiness out of it and a little bit of Will You Met from America if you want to get the juicy notes. So if there are any hop experts watching from Slovenia or anyone from the brewery, let me know what hops, Slovenian hops, they'd recommend for uh, an Imperial Stout because I think that would be an interesting thing to play around with with, uh, with home brewing actually. But yeah, a little bit of earthiness there in the back corners of the palate. As you come further forward, that just smooths out a little bit. There could be a little bit of a herbal quality in there. Um, but then as you get towards the front corners of the palate, you can pick there is a little teeny bit of floral quality there, but that's still blended in with the earthy notes. And then round the front curve of the palate, you've got a nice little um, grassy note as well, which is, uh, which is really nice. And behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer and this that's one of the things about this beer that is a little bit of a surprise the malt base you could actually guess from the aroma but the fruity side of things um, isn't is actually quite different it really is quite different in the way it comes together so yeah with this one then you have a little bit of a uh, um, you do have a little bit of that almost uh, cough syrupy medical uh, medicinal kind of quality to the beer. That comes out a bit more in the aftertaste. You've seen how what how long it was since I took a sip of that, but it starts to come out a little bit later on. But in the beginning, for me, it has a little touch of a sharper raisiny sweetness, something like that. But yeah, in the beginning, it has a nice. A um, little bit of a raisiny sweetness, and it just it kind of evolves a little bit to be a bit more juicy. Um, you start to get more of these kind of um, figgy notes out of this one. Then the further you go into the aftertaste, it starts to become a little bit more like a, a kind of candied strawberry or or blackberry or something like that. It, um, it really has a little bit of that, or a black currant, you know, a little bit of that too. But the things that really linger into the aftertaste with this beer, the coffee beans, that aromaticity of the coffee beans, some of the really high chocolatey, uh, high cocoa chocolatey notes as well, and also some of the, um, also some of that kind of um, earthy hop in the back corners of the palate too. This is really a more kind of roasty, toasty and bitter um, imperial stout, this one, but it does have a nice... Um, coffee bean quality to it as well so yeah um as i always say that you know th this beer for me um i'm not surprised that it's, that it's another really good slovenian imperial stout because there is some quality quality beer coming out of that country so yeah um in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then i would say this beer definitely full bodied carbonation is very smooth it's more of an oily imperial stout this one actually um Yeah, quite an oily imperial stout this one in my mind. Um, good bit of uh, bitterness to this one. I think this one's maybe around the 70 IBU mark. Somewhere about that, maybe even a little bit more. I think about 60, 70 IBUs out of this beer. 
both from the earthiness and from the coffee beans as well and some of the black malts I guess that they've used in here as well. There is a little bit of sweetness to the malt base but as I mentioned it really is, um, it has a bit of smoothness in there too but really this is a big roasty toasty imperial stout rather than anything else. Um, Nice bit of smoothness out of the hops too and a little bit of a, a sharper juicy fruity note to this one also. But yeah, I really like how this one's um, gone together and uh, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful beer. If you get the chance to try this, have a go at it. If you like Russian Imperial Stouts and you like coffee stouts, this one is almost a little bit like a hybrid of both for me. It's got that nice roasty, toasty and black, mac, uh, black malt backbone, but it's also got some coffee smoothness uh, to balance it out too. But a beautiful, beautiful beer. And you know it shows that this brewery can do both sides of the spectrum. They can do the dark side very well and they can also do the lighter side of things. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. But another very, very positive experience from Green Gold Brewing. And again, I'm not surprised that there's another Slovenian brewery doing some really excellent stuff. So yeah, once again, a huge thank you to Davor Shiritz for making this review possible. Very impressed with this beer, actually. I've really enjoyed reviewing this one, so I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Green Gold Brewing as well. Do give me some other recommendations of Slovenian coffee stouts and things, if there indeed are others out there. That would be really interesting to know. But thank you again for watching. Uh, make sure you check out my social media and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this beer. And do keep the, the Slovenian beer recommendations coming in. And I'm sure I will return to Slovenia at some point in the fairly near future. We're getting towards the end of this little mini series now but thank you again for watching and i will catch you guys very soon this was the oil wars a 10.5 percent imperial uh 10.5 percent imperial uh stout kind of a mix between a russian imperial and a coffee stout from green gold brewing in the savanya valley in slovenia once again thanks again for watching and i will catch you guys very soon slanja skull nazdravia cheers <laughs>